Welcome everybody, Stoneware Day. So this is gonna be interactive. If you have questions, you either unmute yourself and ask, or you can put it in the chat. And Krista is really good about monitoring that and will answer if I see it. I may just uh, direct the entire session because a lot of times other people have the same question but just didn't ask. So we have an awesome Stoneware brochure that gives you all the information that you could ever want about Mako stoneware glazes. You can go to makocolors.com and download this brochure. So um, it's gonna talk about the stoneware classics. We have stoneware matte, stoneware with crystal glazes, stoneware gloss, very specialty glazes and I can show you one right now. So some of the specialty glazes are really meant to be uh, decorative because you can see all the texture. This would not be good on a, a dinner wear surface. But these could, is either the crackles or the mud crack or the magma are all our textured stoneware glazes. And then working with flux, and we're, that's one of the two products we're gonna use today. So this gives you all the information. I like having this information at my fingertips so that I can just jump right in and, and double check myself. And anyway, it talks about combinations using designer liner, stroke and coat elements, how you can use other glazes on your stoneware, okay? So this is an awesome resource tool. You can go to Mako Colors and then go to Color stoneware, and you'll find all this information. All right, so let's talk about today's project. The brown on here is the iron wash. So a wash is a multi-purpose product that does quite a bit on your stoneware projects. It's uh, for glazing, and we're gonna combine it with the lemon frost stoneware glaze. So you can see that we can do it in combo. You can also use it as just a, a body stain. So there's a couple of different ways that you can use it. We're using the iron, which kind of gives you a deep rust red, but there's also rutile. It's gonna give you a burnt orange color that you can add in. Manganese gives you a warm metallic finish with some browns to it. Copper is going to give you a green, especially over texture. And cobalt will um, give you a, a rich cobalt blue. So it's kind of like, let's say if you were baking and you were making chocolate chip cookies um, and you add some vanilla to it, just gives it that little extra, mm, that's what a wash does. It adds in a little bit of color. It's not a flux, it's not meant to make it move more. It's to add in another rich color and it can kind of extend the glazes that you're using. So what's also cool about your stoneware wash is you can use these on zero six. So if you do earthenware, it'll work on zero six, six, and go all the way up to a 10. Non-toxic in the fire state. It's not gonna leach out any chemicals. And there are the basic applications and suggestions and tip and then safety, because we don't want to spray in this unless you're using the correct protective, personal protective equipment. All right, so this is also on the website. And um, when we're waiting for glaze to dry, we're gonna click in on the website so I can show you how you can find information because sometimes you have to just go another click away. All right, so you guys ready to get started? All right, so if you have a pencil, what we like to do is we like to do a no paint line. But in this case, uh, so I can see right here, see how we stopped where the glaze did not come all the way down to the bottom of this. With stoneware, where you want to stop a little bit before you get to the foot, because stoneware glazes are a moving glaze. So we don't want this to slide off your wear onto your shelf. So what we did on here is if you take a pencil, lay it flat on the table, and just press it up against your wear and turn it, it creates your no paint line. So for me on my pie plate, I really have a nice little ridge right here anyway. I'm using an ink pen. It'll still burn off. It's just not going to take this temperature. 
So this is just a nice little visual to remind me, don't glaze all the way down to this bottom piece. I personally love using the wax resist. This stuff doesn't gum up your brushes. It only comes off when it's fired. So that could be a plus and it can be a minus. If I drop my brush where I want a design, that wax resist is gonna work. You can't scrub it off of here. It's, it has to be fired off. So I might have to incorporate it or fire it, burn that off, reapply the glaze where I wanted it and then fire it again. But since I am so used to doing earthenware where we definitely cover the whole piece, Oh my gosh, I need to eat spinach. I can't get this open. Sorry for the noise, folks. <laughs> this also comes, so we're using a pint because we use a lot of it, but it also comes in a two ounce, which for my personal work, that's what I purchase. So I would normally pour this out onto a little palette. I'm just going to dip in here. It's normally not that foamy, but I just shook the heck out of it. So what I will do is I will take my brush and I will just apply one coat of wax where I don't want glaze. This is an insurance coat that I just don't check out and glaze all the way down to the bottom. Now, if you do, all you have to do is take your damp sponge and wipe off the glaze. But this is just my jam. I love it. I like the wax resist because this one coat is sufficient to do its job. I don't have to go over it and over it again. Now I'm finished. You could also coat the whole bottom of it if you wanted to, but I'm just doing that for my personal use so that I don't mess up. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that for a second. Now all I have to do is just rinse my brush off. I typically have a second pot of water that I do to clean my brushes because I don't want to have wax in my water and then dip the brush into that and possibly pick up wax. All right, so you guys make sure you take your damp sponge, wipe these pieces off. They are very dusty. Everybody that's in this business knows that this is one of the dustiest places in the world. So we're just going to do that. It helps kind of open up the bisque to also accept our glazes. So if you look at this bowl, what we're going to do is we're going to use the iron wash first. I'm going to use a soft fan brush, and I typically use the number four soft fan brush, the RB144, and I've talked about this before. We've got a couple of different brush lines. We have the reflection brush, which is the acrylic, acrylic handle. I like it because if you soak it in the water, it doesn't absorb the water and make all the paint flake off because it's not wood. But depends on what you like. We also have the sand, soft fan brush and the CB, which means ceramic brush. This was made for ceramic glazes, 604. They're both the same size, number fours, okay? I always prime it because it is a natural bristled hair and I accept it. It's kind of like when you wash your hair, you get it wet first, then you add product. We're doing the same thing with the stoneware wash. So what I'll do is shake up your stoneware wash. And you guys, if you have any questions about the stoneware wash line, please ask or write it, it on the chat. Um, again, it is not a flux. There is a little bit of movement, but it's not going to move as much as a flux does, okay? So I poured some out. It is pretty thin. Um, like melted ice cream maybe. It is non-toxic. It's always right there on the label. It is in the four ounce jar. We also have it in pints. So I'm just gonna kind of mimic what was done on this bowl. So we're gonna load our soft fan brush up and you can see that we're going to do a good coat on the rim. Now here you can see that when it's fired, it's going to intermix with the frosted lemon and it's gonna pull down a little bit, but I'm adding a good coat and then I'm starting to swirl down into my piece. I am gonna do this on the pie plate, but I just wanted to mimic what we did on the bowl, which I'm assuming you guys are using, all right? So this movement down here is because once we get 
our coats of iron wash on here, we're going to completely cover it with the frosted lemon. So I'm gonna do two coats and I would also recommend that you bring it down on the underside of your rim. We added a little bit down here too, we did some swirls. So I'm gonna start on my pie plate. So I'm in, just like you guys right now, I'm going to get my rim. Make sure you load that brush full. More is more and I really am not worried about it going down low because I'm not trying to make the band perfect. Matter of fact, I could come down lower, which I think is always a good idea so that you get a little bit more movement. And we're gonna have movement because of the fact that we, this is underneath a stoneware glaze. I need a little more. Now this is iron oxide, that nice red. That, so be careful of getting it on your clothes. It does tend to stain. If you do get it on your clothes, I would get some uh, detergent right away, you know, like Dawn dish soap or some sort of dish soap and put it on there to get it out or just wear something you don't care about. All right, so I'm gonna put my second coat. This time I'm gonna come back a little bit because the bisque, stoneware bisque is soft fired at 204, it is still very absorbent. So it's almost like earthenware at this point is the fact that the bisque is really open it's going to absorb your glaze and it's going to dry really fast. So we can get two coats on here easily. Dry is when the shine is off the glaze and you can see, especially right here where I have it thicker, it's still really glossy and wet. And here it's a little bit drier. And if you want to go a little crazy and add something in there, you know, you could take your brush a little bit on the, on the side, like a chisel. You could add a little bit of a tiny little line in there as well, just to get a little bit more movement. As I get this dry, I'm going to flip it over and do some banding on the outside. Okay. Anything I need to answer that I'm missing, Krista? Teddy, maybe you can ask this question. What color would the rutile look best with? I feel Ooh. like rutile would be a, a pretty, a lot of options. This okay. is something I really like is we have um, staff that's dedicated to the mid-range and higher and high fire glazes. And they do lots of testing to see what works, what doesn't work. And um, let them do the work for you. You know, look and see and then go crazy on your own. Ooh, I think I got it. All right, so you go up here to color and then down to glaze combinations. And from here, you just scroll down. There are combo sheets that are already printed up that you can um, download if you want, but come here and we're gonna select by firing temperature. I'm gonna go, well, actually we don't have to because these can go both ways. I'm gonna select my product line. So I'm gonna go down to, let's see, it's probably just under, it might be under Stoneware Special. Oh, here they are, washes right there. How easy was that? Now it pulls it up and you can see what we have here. The only two samples we have right now for the wash are the white mug crack over the iron wash or the white mat over the iron wash. Another way you can do that is just to leave this without selecting a product line and then go by color. So if I wanted to find a color here, I would scroll down and find the color that I'm looking for. So here is, there's actually a couple more. There's iron wash and copper wash. Let's look at the copper wash. And you can see how they look there. So there are tons and tons of combinations you can do. They're not always, um, not everything's showing on the website because there are so many. But another way to do this is I'm gonna take this up and clear this out. Just wanna show you one more thing really quick. If I go to cone, I can go to 06, 10, or six. I'm gonna to go to six. And then I'm gonna choose a color like blue surf. There's 10 different glaze combos you can see here. So when I do that, everything that comes up will have this little cup that has a smooth surface and a textured surface. And you can see how they're gonna look, how these colors are gonna look at cone six. So lots of fun to play with.
Yeah, so use that to your advantage so that you don't have to um, spend a lot of time practicing. You know, once you start playing with them, you'll kind of have an idea what will look good together. Plus, you know, it's like anything else. If you apply the washes underneath a stoneware glaze or over a stoneware glaze, it's going to make a difference. Teddy, so here's I, a couple of questions. Oh, good. Um, you did do the outside of the bowl also, correct? With the swirl or not? Yeah. I just flipped mine over and I'm doing two coats. And what I did is I did a kind of a heavy band on the top and then I did a skinnier band. It really isn't pretty. You can do it prettier. Um, but I also like to show people that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect to still look good. It's going to pull these colors down. Another question. Um, would you get more movement on the iron if you put it over the frosted lemon? Yeah, it's definitely going to move completely differently because uh, mm -hmm. it is on top of a moving glaze. So it will pull down a little bit as opposed to absorbing into the bisque. Yep. Good question. That's all I have. Yeah. Hey, let's go back to the website and to okay. wash. Let's show them how they can find wash and information on the stoneware wash. All right. Let me share my screen. All right, so to get to this, you're gonna go over to resources and then down to literature and price lists. And once you're there, this is where you can find all the catalogs. You can click here or you can just keep scrolling down. We actually have it in different languages as well, like Netherlands for Micah who's here. Um, price list, mold flyers, all of this. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll see here the stoneware guide that you can click on here and it'll open it up and you can download it, you can bookmark it. Um, but that way we do it this way instead of printing them all the time because we can update it much more quickly for you as we add new glazes. Um, and then further down, Teddy was talking about the washes. There were these two awesome brochures here that I, we actually have them printed out and I keep it with me all the time, it's great. Yeah. This one's all about stoneware glazes and then this one's about the washes. So I'll click on the washes for you. These are really, really helpful. And you can scroll down and see everything that we're talking about here. So all the things that Teddy's telling you, you can look back in here. You can even see how these glazes fire at different temperatures, um, tips for use, glazes in combination. So it's really comprehensive information. And I'll show you this one as well, the stoneware glazes. This one's really kind of like a little Bible, it's super helpful to me if I'm picking out colors and things I want to use. So somebody had asked me the other day if there was another glaze that they could use besides frosted lemon. And so what I did is I came in this book and I looked and I was like, oh yeah, frosted lemon is one of our modeled stoneware glazes. And so these other ones are gonna work very similarly to that. So that's another way to um, use this. And it also has information in the back over here about each glaze, if it's a translucent glaze, if it's stable, if it moves, and then the definitions for these things such as stable and breaking are also included in the book. I love having this information available so I don't have to try to remember everything. I can just flip through and look at it. Yeah, me too, so fast. Is the wash, isn't the wash only dinnerware safe under a glaze is the question. You know, that's a good question. If um, we can go back to that brochure, Okay. Yes, I, the short answer is yes. Uh, if it's just a stain by itself, it's more of a decorative. So when you have it in combination with a dinnerware safe glaze, it typically then will be dinnerware safe. But we had the icons showing dinnerware, not dinnerware. Uh, oh, here it is. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Okay. So you're going to want to look at that to see if you have anything that is not dinnerware safe. So on each of the wash, okay, let's do this, Krista. Let's go to colors, mm -hmm. wash, and then we'll look at iron wash okay. by itself because this will help you as well, knowing where to find it and how to find the answer. Okay, so we go to color on the front page, washes. Yeah. 
Okay, go to color swatch, which uh, Chris and I both didn't even realize that purple bar said anything when we first looked at this. So we go to <laughs> and here's again where you can select if you want it to be zero, six, six, or 10. So let's go to six. Okay, click on iron wash, because that's what we're using today. See the product information. So it's going to tell you what it fires to at each one of those um, temperatures. And then if you go down a little bit, Krista, go down to additional. Well, it gives you the description. It'll tell you how, the, how they can be used. But I also find there additional information is going to tell you it's dinnerware safe, is it is food safe. So you can find that information on any one. Uh, thank you for the fantastic website. Yeah, well, they've done a great job. But sometimes just knowing where to find it. But that additional information really helps on knowing if that specific wash is dinnerware safe or not, OK? On the label, you're going to have the AP seal or it's going to say non-toxic on it, and you will be fine, OK? So that information, I think, is very helpful to know whether or not you can use it dinnerware, because it doesn't mean that all five of them operate exactly the same way because of the chemical composition. Good questions, my friends. Good questions. All right. I'm going to turn this bad boy back over. It is totally dry enough. There's no shine on here. It's dull as... I am on a Friday night. We're going to shake up our frosted lemon. Now, you could switch over if you wanted to, because I'm going to do a large area, to a number eight sand fan, soft fan brush. Or you can stay with your number four. It just depends on what you have handy and what you want to do. I'm going to get moved my palette with my iron wash out of the way so I will quit sticking it in my hand. Uh, again, I usually paint off of a palette because that way I can load my brush up. I don't have to worry about contaminating my pot. But if it's just you painting out of it, you do what you want to do. Teddy, yeah. while you're talking, there's a question here. It says, so when it says dinnerware safe glaze with clear glaze, it means it's dinnerware safe, but not if it's on top of a stoneware glaze. Uh, right, yeah, you'll want a glaze over it. A clear glaze on top is what it, yeah. I think. Indicated. Either a stoneware clear or, yeah, a dinnerware glaze. Dinnerware, dinnerware safe. safe glaze. Okay. Thank you. I know. Some of those ter terminologies can get a little confusing. That's why we like showing you where you can find it on the website, just so you can double check yourself. All right. So I poured out some of the frosted lemon. Like Krista said, it's a mottled glaze. I fully load my fan brush. And I always go with the contour of the piece. So I'm not going to go horizontally. I'm going to flow with the piece. We're going to apply two coats, letting the glaze dry till there's no shine on it. I am going to switch over to my soft eight just because I have the attention span of a gnat and this will coat it faster. Okay, so you're going to do nice, long flowing coats. You don't overwork it. If you hear that brush drag, you don't have enough glaze on here. You need to reload your brush. Going in circles. So what's going to happen is after we get our two coats on here and we fire it to a cone six, we're going to get some movement, like this movement right here. The lemon is going to pull it down. It's going to intermix with the iron wash. We're going to actually get some different colors. I don't know that here, I'll show the outside of it. Yeah. All right, look how that looks like there's actually some blue in there, but we didn't put blue. And there looks like there's even a little bit of purple. It's just that the brown from the iron wash 
gets knocked down a little bit with the frosted lemon and then the movement pulls it down, creating all these multiple different tones, which are just gorgeous. It's magic. All right, and again, look how fast that dried. It's because the porous stoneware bisque just absorbed all of my glaze. So I'm gonna really load my brush up, add my second coat over all of this. It, to me, it's surprisingly simple how it, easy this is just using these two colors to get such a stunning look. And I guess that's the beauty of stoneware is you don't have to have 30 different colors or 10 or even five, you know, you can do a lot of beautiful combinations and fired results with just a couple of different products. You know, we could have added another glaze in here. If we wanted to, we could have added some flux, but we have such a pretty, result with just the two products. Of course, it doesn't look pretty now that I have that over it, but I wanted to show you how to mimic it. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to let the shine go off of this. And when that occurs, then I'm going to turn it over and I'll prop it up. All right, another question. Does this technique only work with the frosted glazes? Oh no, there's other glazes in the stoneware line that you could also use. Um, for example, what did we say on this one, Krista? Was it honeycomb? And I don't think that was the one that we were talking about. Okay. Oh yeah, it's this one. We used honeycomb. Yeah. Honeycomb and um Winterwood. Uh yeah. Something like that. Yeah, here it is. Honey, yeah. yeah. And shipwreck. Shipwreck, that's right. So you can get some really cool results with, uh, here's the wash, with the wash with other glazes. And you can look, okay, it's not in this, but if you go to the website, the literature that Krista was showing you, look for glazes that are um, transparent or semi opaque you know, that aren't gonna be whole, real opaque. And the cool thing is, let's say if you put down one opaque stemware glaze, then you put down a flux, then you could put a semi-opaque or a semi-transparent over that and get some cool design work. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. It doesn't have to be just as frosted lemon. Uh, our designers just found that this was a really pretty look and it worked well. And like Krista was saying, when we look in here, frosted lemon. Under the stoneware classics, I, you know, I could have used coral sands or coral, uh, lavender mist, some of the lighter colors. I don't think it would have looked that well with sapphire because it's such a deep, dark color that you wouldn't get a good contrast between the dark brown and the dark blue, but it would have worked with these glazes as well. Also, you know, our website has tons of projects and I just went to it and in the little search section, when you scroll down and you actually see the project, you could type in the word wash and you'll see a, a lot of different projects come up that have wash in them. Now the website, we're still working on adding keywords and things like that. So, you know, there may be a project that doesn't come up that has washes in it, but often if the wash is in the title, it will say that it'll show up there. So use that as a resource too. Yeah, a lot of our titles aren't that exciting, but we do it so that it's easy to find. You know, this is called, what is it? Frosted lemon wash bowl. You know, not exactly exciting, but it tells you what you're looking for. All right, now I just flipped my bowl over my pie plate. I have my wax around here so that I don't just get crazy and I don't paint the bottom of this. Now, in some of my other sessions, I told you that when I do my own work, I like the bottom of this to look hand painted as well. So I use a lot of Mako's silk screens and designer liner on the bottom because designer liner has no frit in it. So I can still dry fit this piece 
and have a design on it. So I like to decorate with designer liner, typically black, and make those silk screens to make the bottom of this look pretty. Today, I'm not going to do that. So I'm gonna take my fan brush and load it up and I'm gonna start right up against where I did the wax. I'm gonna show you guys how well this wax works because I'm gonna paint over the wax. Look how it's repelling. It's just crawling back, moving. It's doing its job. It's preventing the glaze from absorbing into the bisque and those two little dots I can just wipe off with my finger. You could use a Q-tip or a damp brush to clean off those areas. But this helps me make a nice line. I don't get crazy and forget. Some people love to do that, some people do not. So this is all about learning options and figuring out what works for you. I personally hate spending time cleaning the bottom of pieces. I just love the way it repels off that wax. Again, I'm following the contour of the piece. I do nice long brush strokes, one side, then I flip my brush over and use the other side because there's a lot of glaze on both sides. That way I don't have to reload as often, but I'm still laying down a really good coat. Long flowing coats, not stretching it, not trying to make that glaze go just as far as possible. I'm gonna lay it down. It's a pretty easy piece, but it doesn't look like it. And that's what I like. Um, here's another note, Kaylin said, it. you can also type in the name of the glaze and it could come up into the project as well. So that's another way oh, to yeah. search for a project by, by glaze color. Good you point. Certain glaze you love, just type yeah. it in. The search engine on this website is fantastic, you guys. And then, you know, what's going to happen is it becomes like Pinterest as you go down this rabbit hole because you're looking for one thing and then it shows you something else cool. And then you take off and look at that. And there's just so much information that has already been done for you and testing and practicing that um, I will start bookmarking all kinds of different projects and looking for ideas. Now, getting to them is another idea, but by golly, I've got that information ready. <laughs> All right, I'm cheating and I'm painting out of the pot just because I can. The One other question I get sometimes is about stilting. And of course, with stoneware, we do not stilt it. Right. Do not stilt this at all. Um, we sent, bring this to you in a soft fired 04 bisque body so that when you apply the stoneware glaze to the stoneware bisque, the clay body and the glazes all mature together at the same time, okay? So that way you have the same shrinkage rate and everything's going on and they look good together. Um, you wouldn't want to have received this already vitrified. Oh, Teddy, along these lines, it's so funny. I was talking about stilts and somebody else brought up something. If you're using like designer liner on the bottom to write your name or put in initials, do you need to worry about it sticking to the shelf? No, no, again, because a designer liner doesn't have frit. It's just basically pigment and clay. So it's almost like it's as close to an underliner, under glaze, I mean, as you can get. So you could use under glaze on here also uh, and designer liner, and you don't have to worry about it sticking to the shelf. Make sure your shelves are kiln washed though, you guys. Um, everything that I was taught not to do, I had to try it anyway, just to see why. And I didn't really realize that when we're firing glaze, you know, it is getting hot and it's spitting and it's bubbling. Just like when you're baking something in the oven, you look in there, you can see it bubbling and spitting. Well, those little bitty spits go onto your kiln shelf and that's glaze. So it will, um, during the firing process, the next firing, you know, kind of open up and it could stick to it. So having the kiln wash on there is an insurance coat that you're not going to stick to 
all of the, the kiln shelf or those little spits of glaze. I Because I was thinking my kiln shelves look really good and by golly, it stuck to it. So this will be, um, put your name on it, decorate the bottom if you want with under glaze or designer liner and or leave it just as is. And then it's going to go directly into your kiln. You know, just set it in there on the kiln shelf. Fire to a cone six. And, you know, if you're new to firing stoneware, you, you can't cheat. This cannot be on two half shelves because this is moving and shrinking. And if you have a gap between two shelves, it's going to sag in between. It has to be fully supported. You don't want to leave it where half of this is off the kiln shelf again because it's going to sag. And um, you want to try to keep it about, you know, you don't want it right up against the heating element. If this was a heating element, this rim is going to get hotter than this clay body here and it can cause problems. So fully supported, no stilts on a kiln wash shelf. Give some room around it to uh, breathe and get the oxygen flowing through there so that the glaze properly matures. You know, leaving an inch between pieces is recommended. And stay away from jamming it right up against a element. That'll all make a difference. Yeah, Mako's Kiln Wash is AC001. It comes in a pint jar like this, pre-mixed. If you have a Scut 1227, one pint will cover four half shelves or two full shelves. If you have a smaller one like I do, um, you know, you can get a couple more or at least one more shelf done with the kiln wash. Just get you a nice hockey brush, hockey, hockey, whatever you pronounce it, and follow the directions on it. It uh, fixes divots if you have tried to chisel off some glaze or some chunks. You can fill that in and then do the entire shelf and you have a nice even shelf again. This stuff is awesome. It doesn't flake like what some of the other stuff did, which is why most of us quit using it because it flaked off and I hated it. But this, uh, the Mako's Kiln Wash is pretty cool. Uh, somebody asked, no stilts, even if you use flux. That's correct. There's no stilting in stoneware. Yeah. It's like crying in baseball. Yeah. You know what will happen? Because I tried it, you know, typical me. What happens is because the, the bisque wear literally is shrinking in on itself and that's what helps make it become vitreous because it shrinks in on itself and it closes the pores, which is to help it, you know, repel moisture or not absorb moisture. So if you have this shrinking and you have a stilt, it will literally shrink around that stilt and you now have an art installation. Okay, so here's a question here. If you have stroking coat over the designer liner, will the liner still show through? It really <laughs> depends on how many coats you put over designer liner because stroking coat is so heavily pigmented that three coats is totally opaque. So if you're going to do a lot of design work and then want stroking coat over it, I wouldn't do more than two coats. But another option is you could use foundation shears over designer liner. And because those are just tinted, it will let the designer liner show through. Oh, if you wax the bottom, is there any way to put your initials? Um, if you have one of those um, underglaze pencils, I think what you can do is kind of scraffito, you know, write your initials, but scraffito down through the wax, and I think your initials should show through. But don't hold me 100% responsible because, you know, there are Bogarts in the kiln, and not everything always works like you think it's going to, but I think that will work. Uh, here's a question. Is it necessary to add water to washes ever? You know, you can add water to wash if you'd like to. It is so heavily concentrated and pigmented that in the very beginning, we said to add water and thin it down, but now you don't really have to. We do quite a bit of work with it just straight out of the jar. So um, that one is an answer that I would say is artist choice and depending on what you're trying to get it to look like. So it can be thinned down if you choose, especially if you're doing just a stain 
but it, it's not necessary. You don't have to. 